Tutankhamun was born around 1342 before Christ, during the reign of his father, the pharaoh Akhenaten, who had initiated a religious revolution in Egypt. Akhenaten abandoned the worship of the old gods, especially the god Amun, who was the most revered and powerful and proclaimed that there was only one true god, Aten, the solar disk. Akhenaten changed his own name, which was formerly Amenhotep IV, and also that of his son, who was originally called Tutankhaton, meaning the living image of Aten. Akhenaten built a new capital for his kingdom, called Akhetaton, meaning the horizon of the Aten, and moved there with his family and followers. There, he devoted himself to promoting the cult of Aten and rejecting the rest of Egypt's religious and cultural traditions. He closed the temples of the other gods, banned their images and names, and had them erased from monuments and inscriptions. He also reduced the power and influence of the priests of Amun, who had accumulated great wealth and land. Akhenaten considered himself the sole incarnation and mediator of Aten, and depicted himself with exaggerated and androgynous features, representing his role as father and mother of his people. Tutankhamun's mother was not the famous Queen Nefertiti, Akhenaten's main wife, but one of his secondary wives, named Kia. Kia is believed to have been a foreign princess, possibly of Mitanni origin, who was sent to Egypt as part of a political alliance. Her name means the monkey, and she was known as the much beloved. Kia had a good relationship with Nefertiti and took care of the education of Tutankhamun and his sisters. However, Kia's fate is unknown as her name and image were erased from the records after Akhenaten's death. Some think that she died a natural death, while others suspect that she was killed or banished by Akhenaten's enemies. When Akhenaten died around 1336 before Christ, Tutankhamun became pharaoh at the age of only eight or nine. His rise to the throne was made possible by the support of the vizier Ai, who was Nefertiti's uncle and Tutankhamun's guardian. Ai was a powerful and shrewd man who had been loyal to Akhenaten, but who also maintained good relations with the priest of Amun and with the army. I was charged with running the government and advising the young pharaoh, who took the name Nebheperur, meaning the Lord of Ra's Manifestations. Tutankhamun married his half-sister Anjasenamon, daughter of Akhenaten and Nefertiti. Anjasenamon was a few years older than Tutankhamun and had been educated at the court of Akhenaten. Her original name was Anjasenpaton, meaning she lives for Aton, but she changed it to Anjasenamon, meaning she lives for Amun, following the example of her husband. Tutankhamun and Anjasenamon began a process of restoring order and tradition in Egypt, which had been altered by Akhenaten's reforms. The first step was to change their names to Tutankhamun and Anjasenamon. With this gesture, they recognized the authority and importance of the god Amun, who had been the main god of Egypt for centuries. They also moved the capital from Akhenaten, the city founded by Akhenaten, to Thebes, the ancient religious and political center of Egypt. There, they repaired the temples and monuments damaged by Akhenaten's reforms and favored the priests of Amun and other cults. In addition, they resumed diplomatic and commercial relations with other countries, which had deteriorated during Akhenaten's reign. Thus, Tutankhamun became the pharaoh who returned stability and prosperity to Egypt after the crisis caused by his father. Although he was very young, he proved to be a capable and respected ruler who listened to the advice of his vizier, Ai, and his wife, Anjasenamon. Tutankhamun and Anjasenamon not only restored the worship of Ammon, but also enriched him and made him more generous. They ordered the construction of new temples dedicated to Amon and other gods, such as Osiris, Isis, Hathor, Ptah, and Montu, they also donated large amounts of gold, silver, copper, cattle, and land to the temples, especially that of Ammon in Karnak. They also celebrated festivals and ceremonies in honor of the gods, 
such as the Opet Festival, the Festival of the Beautiful Meeting, the Coronation Festival, and the King's Appearance Festival. Through these actions, Tutankhamun and Anja Senamon gained the favor and support of the priests and the people, who saw in them the legitimate heirs of the pharaonic tradition. Tutankhamun and Anja Senamon also restored the ancient monuments that had been damaged or destroyed by the Akhenaten reforms. They ordered the reconstruction of the statues and obelisk of ancient pharaohs, such as Amenhotep III, Thutmoses III, and Hatshepsut. They also ordered to delete the names and images of Akhenaten and of Aten from the buildings and the inscriptions, and to replace them with those of Ammon and of other gods. In addition, they ordered to restore the tombs of the ancient kings and nobles in the Valley of Kings and Valley of the Queen, and decorated them with paintings and reliefs that represented scenes from the sacred books and the path that the pharaoh was to follow to the beyond. Tutankhamun and Anja Senamon shared the power and responsibility to rule Egypt. Anja Senamon was not a simple wife, but a queen with voice and vote in state decisions. She is mentioned as the great royal wife, her beloved mistress of the two lands, Anja Senamon. She is also called the wife of the king, whom he loves, the lady of Upper and Lower Egypt, Anja Senamon, who lives forever and ever. Tutankhamun and Anja Senamon had to face difficult and dangerous times during their reign. One of them was the death of his adoptive and protective father, the Visser I, who had been the chief architect of the restoration of order and tradition in Egypt. Another was the threat of an invasion by the Hittites, a warrior people who dominated much of Anatolia and Syria. The Hittites had taken advantage of Egypt's weakness during the Amarnian period to expand its borders and attack its allies. Tutankhamun had to send troops to defend his possessions in the north and south and maintain peace and security in his kingdom. Tutankhamun and Anja Senamon also faced the problem of succession. Having no male sons to inherit the throne, his dynasty was in danger of extinction. So they desperately sought to conceive an heir, but their efforts were in vain. Her two daughters were born dead or died shortly after birth, probably due to the effects of endogamy, as they were the result of a brotherly relationship. His mummies were buried with his father in his tomb, along with two small gold sarcophagus and two miniature thrones that had been prepared for them. Tutankhamun died around 1325 before Christ, when he was about 18 or 19 years old. The exact cause of his death is unknown, but several hypotheses have been proposed, such as an accident, illness, murder, or a genetic complication. His body was mummified and buried in a tomb in the Valley of the Kings, which was originally intended for another person. His tomb was the only one that remained almost intact until its discovery in 1922 by archaeologist Howard Carter, funded by Lord Carnarvon. His tomb contained more than 5,000 objects of great artistic and historical value, including the famous golden funeral mask that covered his face. Medical tests carried out on Tutankhamun's mummy have revealed that the pharaoh had fragile health and various physical problems. Among them, a congenital malformation in the left foot, which forced him to use a walking stick, a parasitic infection in the intestine, chronic malaria, and several fractures in the ribs and left leg has been detected. These injuries could have been caused by a trauma, such as a fall from a car or a hit by an animal or by a violent act, like a hit from an enemy or a complicit of a conspiracy. Some studies have suggested that Tutankhamun may have been murdered by his vizier I, who married his widow Anja Senamun and succeeded him on the throne, or by General Horemheb, who became pharaoh after I. The mummification of Tutankhamun was carried out by the priests of Anubis, the god of mummifying, and the beyond. The priests removed the inner organs of pharaoh except the heart, which was considered the seat of intelligence and personality, and placed them in four canopy vessels, which represented the sons of Horus, the protectors of the viscera. They then cleaned the body with palm wine and sodium, 
a salt that served to dehydrate and preserve tissues. Then they filled the cavities with linen, resins, and spices, and covered the body with vessels impregnated with oils and ointments. Finally, they placed amulets and jewelry between the shelves to protect and adorn the pharaoh on his journey beyond. The funeral of Tutankhamun was prepared in a hurry, as his death was unexpected and he did not have a grave of his own. A small, simple tomb was chosen in the Valley of the Kings, which was probably intended for a nobleman or official. The tomb consisted of four chambers, the well, the antechamber, the funeral chamber, and the treasury chamber. The well was a rectangular habitation that served to avoid floods and looting. The front chamber was a room where objects related to the pharaoh's daily and ceremonial life, such as furniture, chariots, weapons, games, musical instruments, and glasses were deposited. The funeral chamber was the main room, where Tutankhamun's sarcophagus was placed, surrounded by four golden wooden shrines that protected it. Inside the sarcophagus, there were three nested coffins, the last of them of massive gold, which contained the pharaoh's mummy with its golden mask. The treasury chamber was a room where objects related to the funeral and resurrection of the pharaoh were stored, such as statues, coffers, canopy vessels, models of ships, and the famous golden throne. The tomb of Tutankhamun was sealed with a clay seal bearing the name of the pharaoh and that of those responsible for the burial. Various curse was also placed on the walls and objects of the tomb to warn potential intruders of the consequences of profaning the sacred place. However, the tomb did not escape the robbers, who entered at least twice in the years following the burial and stole some jewelry and valuables. Despite this, Tutankhamun's tomb was the best preserved of all those in the Valley of Kings and remained hidden for more than 3,000 years until it was discovered by Howard Carter in 1922, thanks to a clue found in a nearby tomb. The discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb was one of the most important and spectacular in the history of archaeology and aroused interest and admiration for Egypt's culture and history. Tutankhamun became the most famous and admired pharaoh of the modern world thanks to the discovery of his tomb and the treasures it housed. His image has been used in numerous works of art, literature, film, and television. His life and death have been the subject of many investigations and speculations. His tomb has been visited by millions of people, and his objects have been exhibited at several international exhibitions. Tutankhamun is considered a symbol of Egypt's culture and history.